Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Helium 10 Weekly Buzz. My name is Bradley Sutton, and this is the show where we get you familiar with the latest news in the Amazon and e-commerce space. We interview people in the industry you need to hear from and provide training tips of the week that will give you serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. Let's go ahead and see what's buzzing this week. Today, we're gonna go over the news and we've got some articles that have to do with uh, shipping. We've got some articles that have to do with an Amazon Prime price hike in other parts of the world. Um, then we're gonna have a freedom ticket tip of the week has to do with differentiating your product. We're going to have uh, not an interview, but like a kind of like a story time with Brad. Just a little lighter side. Going to make fun of myself a little bit with my most embarrassing moment ever at Helium 10. I'm going to tell you guys about. And then we'll get back and talk about some serious strategies where we're going to show you how in Magnet you can uh, use a certain tool that a lot of people don't use or a certain actual feature of Magnet where you can get kind of like the total search volume in a niche. And make sure to stay to the end because I'm going to give you guys a chance uh, in order to get a a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me for your brand or for anything you guys want to talk about for 30 minutes. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. All right, let's go ahead and get right into the news first. Now, the uh, first news article we have of the day is actually from Reuters, and it's entitled uh, Terminals at California's Third Busiest Port Resume Regular Hours on Monday. So what had happened, and a lot of sellers were actually messaging me on this, is they had, for the last week, and they were worried about it, their containers that came from uh, you know, India and also China stuck in the Oakland port, all right? This is the California's third busiest port because there was kind of like a, a truck driver protest which was blocking it off so that, you know, the container trucks couldn't uh, go pick up the containers. And so pretty much everything was at a standstill there. Well, they were able to open that back up. The protest kind of like moved to another location. So it's going to start back now. It's not all going to be in one day. I mean, that's a week's now worth of containers that got backed up. So they're going to try and get caught up there. But just as of yesterday, somebody uh, on one of our free and ticket extra calls was, was saying, hell man, you know, my container might be stuck for weeks there, but Thankfully, it just opened up this or a couple of days ago. So if you had one of your containers stuck there, hopefully it'll get unloaded in the next couple of days. Uh, next article we have here is actually from Amazon, and it was entitled uh, last week, new features to help you monitor your account health. And so as you guys know, in Seller Central, there's a place where you can monitor your Seller Central account health. And uh, before it was done by colors, you know, it was like green all the way to like red. And if you would get some kind of violation or some of your metrics went down, it, it would change in that scholars, color spectrum. But what they're moving to is kind of like this 1000 point scale. So before it was just kind of like, I think it was like four different colors. And actually that's how it still is in my account. Uh, I'm curious how it is in, in your accounts, if it's moved to the new, to the new metrics yet, but you're going to have a little bit better insight into what is affecting negatively and positively your account health, instead of just looking that it, or just seeing that it's somewhere along the color spectrum. Because if you hit a couple of the colors, you're going to start getting some restrictions on your account. So, um, they said they're going to start rolling out. So take a look at your seller central, you know, go to your, go to your main seller central page and click on account health. And let me know in the comments below, if you're watching this on YouTube, have you guys moved to that 1000 point scale or is it still just showing uh, those colors? Uh, next article in the news was from uh, CNBC and it says Amazon hikes prime membership prices by up to 43% in Europe. And this was interesting. As you guys know, in, in America for Amazon USA, they already had an increase in the uh, prime price. But now, for example, in UK, it used to be 95 pounds, or actually it used to be 79 pounds, uh, and now it's up to 95 uh, pounds, uh, which is about $114 membership to prime. And in other countries, it's going up as well. For example, in France, Amazon France, if you are a member of Amazon Prime, the price has gone up to 70 euros from 49 euros. So that's actually a little bit bigger increase there. And in Germany, it's going up to 89 euros, uh, up from 69 euros. And as you, as you know, in America, uh, in February, it was announced that it went to 139 from, uh, 119. Now, you know, my personal opinion is that this is not going to make much of a difference. You know, like right now, like kind of, you know, Amazon prime is one of the few things available. That's anything like it. And, uh, especially 
in those countries, I think it's not going to cause too much uh, issues where all of a sudden you're going to see less sales because now I, people are not going to buy on Amazon or they're going to cancel their Prime membership. You know, in America, I didn't see you know less sales when when that that change happened, and there actually are more alternatives now that Walmart Plus is out there, uh, which I don't believe is as robust uh, in other in, in Europe. So, uh, what do you guys think? You know, do you think that this uh, price hike is going to cause you to lose some customers? My personal opinion is no. All right, the last article is also from Amazon Seller Central, and it was an announcement this week that they're having a, a new way to manage and transfer funds from Seller Central. It's called Amazon Seller Wallet. And there wasn't too much detail on it, but from what I understand from this article, it almost seems like you're going to be able to like get your disbursements you know, anytime you want instead of having to wait two weeks and also kind of uh, transfer your funds and take your funds in U.S. dollars and transfer it to your other currencies if you're from another country and uh, and do a lot of, what do you call that? That's a transfers. I, I can't think of uh, what the word is, but when you transfer currency from one currency to another currency, uh, they're going to have that available to you. So uh, this is something that's in beta right now, and it said it's only available to a handful of users. None of my accounts have access to this new Amazon seller wallet, but be on the lookout for that. Uh, because it might help a lot of sellers. If you can't wait at all to, to be able to get your money uh, every day from Amazon, don't forget that Helium 10 has an option for that, Alta. So just go to growwithalta.com, or if you're in your Helium 10 account, hit the Alta button there, and you'll be able to apply for that, and you will be able to get your, your disbursements every day if you so choose. All right, well, that's it for the news today. Let's go ahead and get into our Freedom Ticket Tip of the Week and for this one, uh, Lem has something for us. So go ahead, Lem. In this snippet from Freedom Ticket, Kevin King is going to go over what it really means to differentiate your product. Maybe you're in a creativity rut, or maybe you're just really stuck and you're trying to see how can I make this product stand out? Kevin King is gonna go into a bunch of strategies of how you can do that. And some of them are really simple versus other ones are pretty advanced. So be sure to go ahead and check this out. Differentiation is what's gonna set you up for long-term success. If you don't do differentiation and just come out with another Me Too product, you might have success for a short amount of time, but it's gonna be short-lived and, and you're not gonna have a long-term longevity and it's gonna be very, very difficult to actually sell that product. You can't just slap your logo on a product that you find on Alibaba or, or just create something that's almost identical to what everybody else is doing like you used to be able to do and actually have a good chance of success. You've got to stand out from the crowd. You've got to do something different. When people type in a search term on Amazon and the results show up, you have to be the one that just shines on that page, the one that just pops off of that page. It doesn't look like everybody else. And, and otherwise, you're just gonna be competing on price. You're gonna be competing on reviews. And that's not the way to go uh, to, to have a good chance of, of long-term success. So what when you're doing differentiation though, what what is it that makes your product unique? What is your unique selling proposition? What, and there's a, there's a lot of things you could do and consider, and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Now, you, whatever changes you do make, it has to be important to the buyer. So it just can't be just making a change just for the sake of making a change. And a color variation is not differentiation, that, uh, just to, to be clear on that. But there are several things that you can do, so let's talk about some of those that, that you might be able to do to actually make your product different. One is packaging. Sometimes you can actually completely change the packaging. It can be the exact same product inside a, a, a plastic bag and the exact same product inside a really nice box. And that box might cost you a couple extra dollars to ha have manufactured, but you can charge 10 to $20 more because of the perceived value. People eat with their eyes first. And so the, you always want to, to present something in, in, in a very positive manner and make it look exclusive and unique. And packaging is one of the, the easiest ways to do that. I mean, I've done that with uh, some of my products you'll see in one of the interludes where I show you some of my bully sticks. And I did that exact same thing where everybody else was selling things in a plastic bag. I put mine in a cigar box. It was able to charge three times as much for 10% less, pro uh, or actually 90% less product. And it worked really, really well. Packaging is a great way to stand out. Another way is bundling. If you could put two products together, so maybe you're seeing that one product is selling really well and you're seeing it frequently bought together, people are often buying another product with it. Maybe if you bundle those two things together, you can make it stand out. One of the things I've done in the past is I was selling uh, um, makeup. 
I'm selling a 3D lash, fiber lash mascara for women. And I, everybody had the same 3D uh, fiber lash mascara. But what I did is I saw in a lot of the reviews that people were complaining about they wish they had a small little brush to, to mess with their, their eyelashes. So I had a separate factory make a small little brush and I included that in the box. That's an example of bundling and that made it stand out, that made it different. So that, that's an idea of bundling. Another thing you can do is like a secret sauce. And sometimes this is actually a secret sauce, like maybe it's a special ingredient. Uh, your, your skin mask is from the Dead Sea and it has a special salt that nobody else has in all their, their ingredients. That's only from this one little little bay of the Dead Sea that everybody else is just pulling it from the, the main ocean there. And you're pulling yours from this special little bay where there's this secret lost uh, cave or something like that. You know, some sort of special little ingredient that you can emphasize can make you stand out. Or even just naming your product in a certain way. Another thing is materials. The materials that you make the, the, the product out of can, can make can be a differentiator. I have another product uh, that's in the uh, that you'll see in, in one of the interludes uh, that's a life jacket for dogs. And this life jacket for dogs, we're making it out of recycled ocean waste. You know, the large size take it's eight eight plastic bottles that go into into this product, and, and so that differentiates it from everything else. It's made out of recycled plastic. Uh, Eighty percent of the of the of the jackets made out of recycled plastic. That's important to a lot of people. Remember, I said it has to be important to the buyers. That's important to a lot of people, so that helps it stand out and can justify even a little bit higher price because people will pay for that because it's special. Believe it or not, Kevin King gets into so much more in the rest of that video. So if you want to check out the rest of that clip, go to module 4.04 in our Freedom Ticket course. Go ahead and check it out and let us know what you think. All right, thank you for that, Lem. Don't forget, guys, make sure to get into your Freedom Ticket so you can get other tips. Uh, we have over 70 hours of strategy just like that in our Freedom Ticket program. And now we also have even now Freedom Ticket for Walmart there in a bonus week. So make sure to go in and, and start taking the Walmart training as well. Uh, usually around this time, we have the interview of the week. You know, we'll interview somebody at Helium 10 or we'll interview, you know, somebody from our Seller Solutions Hub or one of you uh, Helium 10 users out there. But now I just want to go ahead and have a little lighter side here before we get back to the strategy and tell you about my most embarrassing moment at Helium 10. Um, this was like in the first year that I was working at Helium 10. And this was back in 2018. And this was before we were uh, assembly. You know, we were just Helium 10. But we were in a small WeWork in Irvine. That was our, one of our first offices there. There's only about 15 of us in the office and we just got an HR person. I remember we, we uh, Natalie, we didn't have a, a HR, you know, before that, cause we were just so small, you know, Manny and Guy, founders of Helium 10 used to take care of everything. And anyways, like in my first few months there, I got taken to the HR office, which was like a, a small side room. And they're like, Bradley, you know, Natalie was like, Bradley needs to talk to you. I was like, uh oh, what did I do? I was like, I didn't think I did anything wrong. She's like, okay, you know, Bradley, we like what you're doing here, but you know, we've been getting some complaints and it's because you have bad breath. And I'm like, what? I have bad breath. I was like, I, I, I have breath mints and, and I'm always chewing gum. Like, how is this possible? I was like, this is like so embarrassing. I was like, okay, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, that won't happen anymore. You know, my bad. I'll, I'll work on that. And then, so that was that. And then like a month later or two months later, again, she called me to the office like, Bradley, you know, we had to talk about this, but I'm still hearing, you know, the breath is, is kicking a little bit. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't understand what is happening here. And it was, it was that's super embarrassing. I mean, like, you know, it's gotta be bad if you get taken to HR, you know, usually people don't say anything. They'll be like, okay, we'll, we'll put up with this. But for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't have bad breath, you know, like, what is going on? So what happened, as it turns out, what I found out was later on when we were filming Project X, you know, I had like, you know, I've told you guys this story before, how I had a medical emergency where like my assist on my back like exploded and it's the worst smell ever. But what was happening was I didn't have bad breath, thank goodness. But the cyst on my back, this is gross guys. Sorry, this is, this is like beyond PG-13 here, but would sometimes leak. And it's just like gross. You know, this, anything that comes out of a cyst is just nasty. It's just whatever that's just been sitting there. And when it would leak, it would cause a bad smell. But I had had that cyst for like years and without getting it removed. And so what was happening was it was leaking out sometimes. And I was just kind of used to the smell, I guess. But then everybody else would just like die 
<laughs> of, of, of this terrible smell that was coming out of my back. And they would just assume, rightfully so, you know, that I had bad breath because, you know, like, who knows about cyst leaking? I mean, that's not something you just assume as bad breath. So anyway, I had to deal with that for two or three years. So I apologize to all of my Helium 10 companions who have had to put up with my leaking cyst. Please let me know, guys. Uh, I took care of it surgically, so hopefully it's not happening much anymore. But uh, if it is, you know, let me know because I need to know. But anyways, what about you guys? What's your most embarrassing moment that has ever happened to you in your Amazon career or just in your old, in your other companies? Let me know in the comments so I don't feel so bad because that's got to be one of the worst things that can happen to somebody being taken to HR and having the whole company think you have got terrible breath. All right, let's get back to more serious things. Now, uh, Carrie has got a strategy for us on a tool that we've used many times, Magnet, that maybe you guys have not used lately. So Carrie, what do you have for us? Today, I'm gonna to show you a tool that maybe you've seen before or maybe you haven't that's within Magnet. Now, we have so many different tools with so many little different tricks and tips that we have that can help really majorly improve your business, and I think this is one of them. So I utilize you know smaller search term keywords to create campaigns and target um, to go kind of after the low-hanging fruit. So what I do is I'll usually search for keywords with maybe 500 to 1,000 searches a month or sometimes even less than that depending on the product. So I might even go, you know, 100 or maybe even go down to 50 searches a month and kind of put those keywords into their own little campaigns, maybe five to 10 keywords each and focus on some pay-per-click strategies there. Make sure those keywords are written into my listing so that I can actually start targeting those. And if they have those seed keywords in there, you can start ranking for those major keywords. So it all kind of works together to ride, to take your product to the top. So I want to show you how those smaller search volumes can really add up. So I'll go ahead and I'll share my screen. So what I've done here is in Magnet, I've actually searched coffin shelf. I did a little filtering for, you know, phrases containing coffin. And here I am just finding a bunch of different keywords. I checked off the keywords that I think are going to be most relevant, but you know, they might have a lower search volume. Like this one has 598, 223. So you can see that, you know, those are pretty substantial over time. And there are some keyword sales that come from that. So this one has nine, three. So what I like to do is I like to analyze, you know, how impactful all of these keywords together could potentially be. And the way I do that is I check those off and then I add them to a list. So I actually have created just this random folder here to show you a uh, coffin analyze. And um, so I created that folder and then I added those keywords to that folder. Okay. You can create this keyword list also in Cerebro. So if you wanted to analyze keywords from Cerebro, you could do that here too. Um, so I'm going to take that keyword list and I'm going to hit analyze keywords and I'm going to click add from my list. Okay. So I've got these coffin shelf keywords that are lower search volume and I want to see how much impact they can make if I maybe targeted them in a smaller PPC campaign and put them into my listing. Okay. So right here, you can see the total search volume is 3,989, which is pretty substantial when you really think about it. All these little tiny keywords that we thought maybe were nothing and we didn't target uh, actually could potentially add up to something. So you can also see the keyword sales here. So we've got, you know, 75 here, 9, 36. There's all of these are going to actually add up over time. So over the course of a month, this could actually add some good numbers to your sales. And not only that, if you're targeting these keywords, they're long tail keywords. They also have your main keywords in them. So that can also help you to rank for those. So I usually usually like to um, include those lower search volume keyword phrases because I think that they could potentially, you know, grow over time, first of all, but then also, you know, you don't want to miss out on that low hanging fruit, especially in more competitive niches. So I challenge you to go ahead and try out Magnet, uh, the Analyze uh, tabs right here, Analyze Keywords. Try it out and see for yourself. Just go ahead search for some lower search volume keywords, analyze the, the total search volume and the potential sales that you could get, and then go ahead and put them in a campaign and see what happens over a month and see if it actually, you know, adds to your sales over the course of a month. I think it definitely will because I know it has for me and I look forward to hearing all of your success stories. So I hope you have a great day. All right. Thank you for that, Carrie. Now, uh, lastly, I, I told you guys I would give you an opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And what gave me this idea was last week we had a special on our Bigger Better launch where if you were to sign up for Sell and Scale Summit, 
uh, I was going to hook you up, you guys up with my Chinese uh, sourcing agent. And that, that ended already. So I was like, what else can I provide? You know, people were asking me like, Hey Bradley, I missed that. I saw it on the replay on YouTube. By the way, guys, if any of you had missed the bigger, better launch for this month, you can, you can watch on YouTube, but you, you'll see that I had offered that, but you know, that offer expired. So I was like, no, I can't, I can't give that anymore. Um, so what can I give if people sign up for sales scale? So what I'm going to do for now until Sunday. All right, now until Sunday, if you guys sign up for Sell and Scale Summit, and you can do that at h10.me forward slash s3 or sellandscalesummit.com, it's up to you, h10.me forward slash s3 or sellandscalesummit.com, and you use the code S3BS100, all right? S3BS100, that'll be in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. That saves you $100 off, but for everybody who does that between now and Sunday, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a, a 30 minute consultation one on one, not not a group one where, you know, you'll be all in a group. But for the first 20 people who do this, we're going to go ahead and give you a one on one consultation with me where you can go over your brand. I can do some product validation for you, maybe optimize your listing, whatever you guys want to talk about. So once you sign up for that link, you guys are going to need to just show a, a screenshot of your receipt and send it to my assistant, uh, Mel. And you can email him at mel.d, M-H-E-L dot D, at helium10.com. So if you miss this, you can ask support to, to reach out to Mel, Bradley's assistant. But again, if you sign up for, with my code from now until Sunday night, then we will go ahead and give you a 30-minute consultation. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to The Buzz this week. We'll see you guys next week to see what's buzzing.